Thanks to Hamilton for sponsoring a portion of this video. In the video game space, there are certainly a ton of weapons, from daggers to battle axes, from crossbows to BFGs. Most players will need to familiarize themselves with an armory of options before facing off against a final boss or two. But sometimes, the thing that gets those players where they need to be at the end of a fulfilling story isn't simply a slick blade or heavy blast of bullets, but rather a good piece of in-game gadgetry to offer versatility and flavor. Now, I will admit, sometimes this line between gadget and weapon is a little blurry. So before you come at me, let's establish some clear definitions. For me, a weapon is used purely for combat purposes. It deals damage and that's all. A gadget can be used as a weapon, but also has a major impact outside of combat. A gun that can simply hit a target is a weapon, but a gun that also shoots acid, which certainly can hurt enemies, yet at the same time can open up pathways, is a gadget. And for the sake of this list, when it comes to gadgets, I am I am leaning more towards the technological side of things. Make sense? Good. With that said, let's get started with my top 10 in-game gadgets. Number 10. It's an unwritten rule in video games that if you have tactics or stealth, you have to have some kind of goggles to go with it. So obviously, I have to put one of the most iconic on this list. But which goggles are the grandest of them all? For me, it's got to be the multi-vision goggles from Splinter Cell. These are easily one of the most iconic stealth goggles in history. Those three green dots surrounded by black have been ingrained in my brain since the first game released back in 2002. So what do they do? Well, the multi-vision goggles assist our main character's Sam Fisher in assessing the environment around him, granting access to night, thermal, and electromagnetic field vision. You know, the three most important visions when dealing with stealth. And while only three modes of sight may seem sparse compared to offerings for other stealth franchises, and heck, even later iterations of Splinter Cell for that matter, these originals set the world on fire as they offered the player a ton of choice when engaging in missions, setting a clean foundation for what was yet to come. Not to mention the iconography around those three green dots. Although there are a gaggle of good goggles, for me, these stealthy spectacles from Splinter Cell are superior and the obvious choice for the greatest goggles in all of gaming. And with that said, I have said goggles at least five more times than was actually necessary for this video. Goggles. Number nine. The original Bioshock and its sequel were defined by their setting the underwater city of Rapture. Bioshock Infinite took things skyward to a completely different setting, and there's no better way to fly through the skies and cause a little mayhem than with the Skyhook. Now, the very first thing you do with the Skyhook is you use it to kill a racist cop, but it's much more than just a badass melee weapon. The Skyhook is also one of the primary methods of transportation. Spread throughout the city of Columbia are the skylines, basically railways through the air, and using the Skyhook to traverse through the skyline sets the tone for any large-scale battle in the game. Using the Skyhook is exactly for the first time in the series, battles take place in gigantic open-air spaces, and the Skyhook lets players move between locations extremely quickly. This device turns every big arena fight into a roller coaster of chaos, and keeps combat feeling fresh and different. When I completed Infinite, I had to play through the game multiple times, but I never grew bored of the Skyhook and the way it invigorates the combat. Even the Clash in the Clouds DLC, which had me defeating wave after wave of enemies over and over again, never felt stale due to the use of this awesome spinning claw of death. The Skyhook is an incredible tool, a perfect blend of world building and usefulness that changed the way players think about movement in games. Hey, if we can't get high speed railways in California, maybe we can get some skylines and skyhooks instead. Although chances are someone will ruin that for sure. Number eight. The Metal Gear Solid series is famous for its use of tech the codec, the solid eye, and who can forget the iconic cardboard box? So simple yet so effective. But you know what's really cool? A robot arm. I'm talking about the bionic arm from Metal Gear Solid 5: The Phantom Pain. Designed specifically for Big Boss, this custom-made prosthetic offers near limitless utility for the technical espionage aficionado. Want to knock out the enemy from far away? Try the rocket punch. Want to pull an enemy closer? You can stun anyone you encounter with a powerful strike or use of the hand to grapple them in. This thing's got even so for cry 
Ryan out loud. Snake actually punches the ground with this metal fist to send out the sound waves. It's pretty badass. Snake can even detach the arm and send it flying across the battlefield like a glorious rocket. Imagine Thing from the Adams Family doing retcon in Afghanistan, and you'll get an idea why this iconic arm is so freaking cool. The bionic arm manages to showcase a miraculous level of ambidexterity throughout your playthrough, making it a Metal Gear Solid gadget that is truly handy. I, I, I damn it. <laughs> Number seven. There are a myriad of reasons why Fallout 3 is considered one of the most immersive gaming experiences ever made. The harsh world and difficult choices struck a chord with a generation of fans, myself included. This immersion even extends to the Pip-Boy 3000, a wearable display menu. The Pip-Boy is easily the coolest way to check out your stats. The Pip-Boy 3000 is essentially a computer that is forcibly attached to the protagonist's arm. As the ads say, Pip-Boy 3000, a part of your life. But they need it literally. It operates as a map a quest tracker, a radio, and a light amongst other functions. But what really makes it stand out is its iconic design. The black and green glowing screen and old school knobs and dials to the Pip-Boy are haunting. For the protagonist, the Pip-Boy is bound to them, and it's a forceful reminder of the reality that they're all living in. The fact that every time I wanted to check something out, my player character lifted their arm until the Pip-Boy filled the entire screen. It helped draw me further into the apocalyptic wasteland of Fallout. The Fallout series is famous for its amazing world building, and the Pip boy is just icing on that atmospheric cake. Number six. The Ratchet & Clank series is well known for its arsenal of weapons and gadgets, but across 14 different games, what is the best gadget that Ratchet & Clank has up its arsenal? For me, and it may be biased because it just came out, but I'm gonna go with the Rift Tether. The Rift Tether is an item that allows for instantaneous travel wherever a rift might appear. Although it may seem simple, it creates an awesome visual effect that filled me with glee every single time I did it. It also created a great reason to explore levels. If I saw a rift in the distance, I'd know that there was something hiding there and I just had to look at it. And it's even more fun in combat. In many battle arenas, there will be rifts all around that can be used to gain a tactical advantage advantage over your enemies. There was nothing more satisfying than seeing a rift behind a group of enemies using said rift tether and attacking them from behind. It really added to Ratchet and Clank's already exciting combat. The rift tether also grants access to the pocket dimensions, fun little platforming challenges that serve to break up the combat and story a little bit. Overall, the rift tether is an awesome gadget that not only improved the already great parts of a game, but really showed off the graphical power of the PS5. And for that, it easily belongs on this list. Number five. Mario games are often defined by their power-ups cape in Super Mario World or the flying cap in 64. But in 2002, Super Mario Sunshine did something completely different, abandoning temporary power-ups for a more permanent fixture in the form of a flood that also has temporary power-ups. Flood is an acronym that stands for Flash Liquidizer Ultra Dousing Device, which is a long-winded way of saying that it's a water pack. This not only gives Mario the ability to use a water gun to clean all the gunk on the Isle of Delfino, but also a turbo boost to race across water, a rocket jump, and even give Mario a hover to all in the air after a jump. This single device changed Mario's moveset entirely. Yes, it replaced the iconic long jump and I will forever be salty for that, but the Flood also allowed for more deliberate puzzle solving instead of just elaborate platforming sequences. Flood even has a ton of personality. When you first find it, the Flood talks to you in an adorable teeny voice and periodically chimes in on Mario's various ventures throughout Isle Delfino. These moments are brief but effective in making the player attached to Flood, making the ending of Sunshine that much more emotional. Implementing Flood was a risky move for Nintendo, both narratively and gameplay-wise, but in my opinion, over time, it does pay off and gave a splash of bold experimentation, widening ever further what a 3D Mario game could dare to do in future installments. Number four. The Legend of Zelda is known for giving players different tools and items over the course of a long adventure. But in Breath of the Wild, Link's most recent adventure, players are given everything they need to solve every puzzle right up front. With the Sheikah Slate, Link has everything he needs. The Sheikah Slate is a piece of ancient technology that looks suspiciously like a Wii U gamepad, or in some cases, the Nintendo Switch. And Link carries it around in a little holster like it's a Blackberry, using it to interface with everything from shrines to towers to divine beasts. Beyond its application, 
applications as a map and codex, the Sheikah Slate is also Link's Swiss Army Knife for both puzzles and combat. The Slate lets Link use powerful runes, making it the ultimate Zelda gadget. Instead of having to find a bomb bag in a dungeon or a magic spell from a great fairy, the Slate gives Link the ability to freeze water, stop time, and telekinetically move stuff around. It's even got a camera on it, letting players take a selfie with Ganon, a series first. Zelda games have never given the player more freedom than in Breath of the Wild, and the Sheikah Slate is emblematic of the shift to player freedom. Giving players all the tools they need right out the gate is a bold move, and hopefully one that will return in the much anticipated sequel. Number three. For almost his entire life, Luigi was stuck in his famous brother's shadow. However, everything changed in 2001 with the release of Luigi's Mansion. Now, he was still in his brother's shadow, but he had a pretty cool vacuum to go with him. And while the Poltergust 3000 was great, the best version came in Luigi's Mansion 3 specifically. This version, called the Poltergust GOO, or Goo, has received some serious upgrades. With his newly improved vacuum, Luigi's got access to a burst that lets him jump to the air and a suction shot that shoots a suction cup to drag objects around. But one of the best parts of the Poltergust goo is easily the tank of green liquid in the back. By releasing that goo, Luigi can summon Gooigi. And Gooigi, just like Mario, is a better version of Luigi. He can move through bars, spikes, and grates, while also being able to solve puzzles and sense booze with vibration. Plus, he's better than Luigi aesthetically speaking. He's greener than the green man himself, has a nicer voice, and apparently tastes like coffee. I'm sure Luigi tastes like broccoli in tears. The Poltergust Goo is already a great gadget, but Professor E. Gad improved the device tenfold with the addition of Gooigi. Sorry, Luigi. It looks like you're now in another brother's shadow. Number two. The main story of a Pokemon game usually has you following a specific order of events. Get all eight gym badges, defeat an evil team, beat the Elite Four, and become a champion. However, there is one goal that is the test for every true Pokemon master. Gotta catch them all. And the only way to do that is with the Pokeball. The Pokeball is simple in its design and function, but that's probably what makes it so iconic as far as video game gadgets go. You obtain the most recognizable monster catching sphere at the start of every Pokemon journey, but it won't be long before you need to get balls with a higher catch rate, like the Great Ball or Ultra Balls, in order to capture stronger Pokemon. Then there are the Poke Balls with specific scenarios that make them better, like the Dusk Ball, which is more effective at night, or in darker areas, like caves, and the Net Ball, which is better for bug or water type Pokemon. There's also the Premier Ball, the Quick Ball, the Repeat Ball, the Dive Ball, the Repeat Ball, the Love Ball, the Heavy Ball, the Repeat Ball, the Repeat Ball, and of course, the Master Ball. And that's not even half of how many different Poke Balls there are in the game. On top of all of this, it's one of the best items in Smash Brothers. Tell me you don't get excited every time a Pokeball pops into existence. Or are you too busy playing no items on Final Destination? I'm not judging. I think both answers are correct. However, there is one more gadget that I love even more. But before diving into that, this next portion of the video is sponsored by Hamilton. As many of you know, the best in-game gear often jumps off the screen and into real life. And well, in the case of the Far Cry franchise, Ubisoft and Hamilton watches have collaborated in a big way with an in-game integration that you can equip in the game. And also, also actually wear in the real world. So not only can you both earn and wear this timepiece in the game as Danny Rojas as you battle for Yara's freedom, but you can also purchase this watch in real life when both Far Cry 6 and the Hamilton Khaki Field Titanium Far Cry 6 Limited Edition watch launch on October 7th. The Hamilton Khaki Field Titanium helps you virtually complete your missions and adventures with in-game features like the unique and original keeps on ticking function, which improves general defense during sprints, making it a strong piece of in-game gadgetry. And beyond that, obviously, the Hamilton Khaki Field Titanium can be rocked in the real world for any adventure. However, as a heads up, there are only 1,983 pieces of this special edition watch which have been produced. So if you want this one-of-a-kind piece of Far Cry history, act fast. Visit the Hamilton Watch website and discover the limited edition watch there at www.hamiltonwatch.com slash Far Cry 6. And as the briefest of side notes, I really think it's awesome that Hamilton is doing this type of integration with the gaming industry like this. As a lover of films, I've seen them featured in huge Hollywood productions like Ocean's Eleven, Interstellar, and true classics like 2001 A Space Odyssey. So for me personally, it's really cool to see such a prestigious brand recognize the juggernaut that gaming truly is. Thank you again to Hamilton for sponsoring this video. Now on to my regular content and the final in-game gadget on this list. Number one. 
Now, I know that there are plenty of gadgets that could take this top spot. I'm sure some of us already may be yours for how invented they are at number one. However, my number one in-game gadget at the top of this list, like many on this list, has a simple yet elegant defining mechanic. This tool changed not just how I think about games and their worlds, but introduced a generation to a phrase that's been memefied to death, yet still carries great weight. Now, you're thinking with portals. Gadgets don't get more magnificent than the handheld portal device, aka the portal gun, from Valve's portal. The portal gun does exactly what the name suggests. It shoots portals. One button shoots a blue portal, another an orange. Enter through the orange portal, exit the blue one, and vice versa. It is a concept at once easily understood with implications that are almost limitless. The portal gun can be used to make objects and goals easier to reach, or even as a momentum building physics engine, where the player can fling themselves vast distances by properly applying the properties of portals. The game makes you think outside of the box by utilizing physics and momentum in order to reach hidden areas or complete objectives faster. Once you start thinking with portals, you kinda can't stop. All of the gadgets on this list are cool and effective and iconic. However, none of them are nearly as mind-blowing as the portal gun. And that's why I think it's the greatest video game gadget of all time. What's your list? Let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.